Okay, this is the disassembly of a ResMed AutoSense 10, Auto, or sorry, AirSense 10, AutoSet. This is the for her version, but it's gonna be the same whether you get the one that's that has the additional for her algorithm or the black one that has the only the original algorithm. Um, what I'm gonna do is disassemble it. I'm gonna show you how to disable the modem or remove the modem. And then we're gonna go deeper into the internals and uh, Take it apart, give it some kind of deep cleaning. Imagine that you bought this used and it smells like cat ladies or smokers or essential oils, something like that on the inside. That's gonna give you a nice little puff of nasty uh, when you first start up the CPAP. So let's figure out how to do it. We'll jump right in. First of all, the cover plate is for aesthetics. It's got a nice little, oh, actually tools, really just one tool, Torx number 10. That will undo all the screws, little place to put the screws, okay? So, notice the little place where your finger goes? Yoink! Take off the cover plate. Okay, that's step one. That will reveal two screws here on the front, and the other two screws you need to take apart are these two at the very back. There's one there, there's one there. So let's do it. Obviously, well, it may become more obvious during the video. I'm not an expert handyman or an expert medical anything. I just have one of these. I've done a couple of them actually somehow. I do like taking things apart and improving things. And I do have sleep apnea. So this is actually my third one to take apart for a friend. Bought it used and my first one smelled like some nasty peppermint and it would not clear out. I subjected it to ozone for a long time, it did nothing. And uh, the second one smelled like old rags. This one's not as bad. It smells like it's been sitting in a dusty warehouse, I would say. Okay, so I've removed the four. And by the way, that the only place you can really smell it is you put your nose in here, give it a whiff. If it smells bad, I mean, obviously clean out that chamber. If it's the tube or the humidifier, just replace them or, I mean, give them some kind of deep clean. But uh, if the, it's like the actual internal part of the machine, it's harder to get to. But I'll show you how to do it. All right. So here, there's a bunch of little hooks. So you need to pull out. And then here, there's a couple of little, like, smaller hooks on the inside. So you, it actually needs to go in just a little bit. So the scientific way to do this is to grab here and... Basically give it a little, little force. Maybe no pressure I think is enough. Just a little force, see little hooks. Pick it up and over. That will undo the hooks on the back. And it's off. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the inside. So just to remind you how these machines work. This is where the air intake in, the filter goes right here. Uh, this is the SD card, I don't have one in there right now. Uh, here's the little port for the oximeter. And the air gets sucked in here, goes through this little chamber, does its thing, comes out here, goes to the humidifier, out there, to you. Love it. All right, so the number one reason why people take these apart is because they want to disable the modem. If you already own the machine and you no longer want to be connected to your insurance, or if you bought it used and you're getting annoying pop-ups, that kind of thing, all you need to do is disable the modem and you'll never get bugged about it again. So how do we disable the modem? See these little wires here, hook into that little connector. Done. The modem's disabled. The CPAP will now work just fine and it will never ask you about anything. It won't connect with anybody. You're completely, um, completely anonymous and the man has no more control over you. So if that's all you wanted to do right here, you would just take this and put it back on with the back first and then the front, clip it in there, snap, four screws, put the faceplate on, give it a little thump, and you're done. However, I wanna take this down a little bit farther. The next piece to come off is this side plate that holds a bunch of stuff in. So I'm gonna come under, under here and you can see two screws. You don't have to take these two off. Screw number one. Screw number two. All right. 
Now this side plate that contains the modem actually just comes straight out. Just gentle, ease it out, ease it. Yes, there's the modem. And, and it just pops out. You can leave it in there if you want, of course. In fact, I think that's a good idea. You leave it in there and then uh, if you have, you can plug it back in if for some reason you want over the air updates or I don't know, maybe sell it to somebody who wants to connect it uh, to their insurance. Okay. All right, so here we have our machine. Again, input, it goes into this little housing. This is where the air blows around, blows out there. So this is where the magic happens in terms of air movement and also air stinkage. There's only one screw remaining that holds it in place. Let's remove that bad boy. So if you're doing this at home, this is the stage where I would take a few pictures, you know, snap some pictures there, there, take some pictures down here. There's a little clear piece. That one in particular, it's a little bit hard to keep track of sometimes. Don't forget these two little guys need to match up. Um, so here we disconnect the electric, uh, the modem, electricity for the mount. Sorry, not the modem, the electricity for the pump, the motor. There you go disconnected. We've already got the screws off. Let's get these little wires. Now I think we can pull this out. Yeah, we can. Just pull it away from there. Gently. And then start easing it out past all the little... There's a few things that will catch on. Yes. There you go. So this housing has the brains of the unit, but none of the stink. So it's pretty much, we set that aside, it's good to go. Here is the moving parts. Notice this little clear piece, it's pretty easy to not get on the right way. Or I should say, if you don't take a picture, you're going to have a hard time figuring out how it goes back on. This little wire goes over a little nook here, little lip. Okay, now there's two protrusions. There's a short one and a long one. Sorry. There's two protrusions. Short one and a long one. And they go through these holes, the square one. The round one goes over the larger protrusion. Okay, that's how it goes. The wires go over it. That was the part that messed me up the first time. I didn't take pictures and uh, it was a real pain figuring out how it goes. Okay. Now we are ready to, I think, take this thing apart. Let's do it. There are three more screws. Again, they're identical to the other screws. So nice, clearly designed to be serviced. Although you never find anybody servicing these things. You know, that's just the way medicine is. Make the insurance, buy some more. But it makes for a really nice used market if you have a little handy man skills. But actually, you can buy ones that don't have anything wrong with them on the used market for very little money. And actually, you know, I should be clear that I'm taking this apart not for the purpose of disinfecting it because there's really no chance of germs from in here getting to you. It's just because it smells bad. And that's a problem too. You're going to be breathing this stuff in at night. Okay. So there's no more screws. Now we just lift it off. Okay. So there's a little foam piece. It's got a little notch cut out for the wires. Wires come out here. You'll notice they go into this little hook. And we'll lift it out. Let's see. That's it. We'll lift it out. Oh, put your finger in this hole and just pull up. There you go. Oh, one more thing. On the back, see the silicone? It sort of holds you in there. So just push it in. It'll make it a lot easier. Finger in the hole, there you go. So here's the housing, easily cleaned, but it probably has some residue if you got some, if it was in a smoker's house or somebody who loves essential oils and somehow got it in there. This is gonna pick up a lot of stink because it's foam. And here we have the housing. Now the pieces of silicone are just sort of stuck through here, like hooked over. So you can just, you can push them out or really just pull it off we don't break anything. Notice, by the way, there are individual little tabs, individual, individual, and then there's two next to each other, which is right next to where the wires are. The wires go through 
through that hole. Okay, so that's another thing we'll, we'll clean. Here we have the silicone that goes around the actual motor. You can pull that off without too much trouble. Okay. Okay. So the silicone definitely is going to have probably some smells, um, but it can be cleaned really well. So wash, 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 wash. This can be washed. This housing, I would not subject it to any kind of water um, on the inside. So what I suggest in terms of cleaning is you give these guys a good little wash down in, in hot water, you know, with, um, with Dawn dish soap, and then clean them out really well. Let them dry. This thing you can wipe off. Uh, I wipe it with, I'm going to wipe it with alcohol first, alcohol wipes. And if there's any stink left, I'll maybe give it a little bit of like a wet paper towel that's got some soap on it, and then a wet paper towel, and then a dry paper towel. That's how I do it. You can put peroxide in there if you want. I mean, not in there. You can subject these things to peroxide. Get them all clean using the method of your choice. Um, my experience with my first one was I tried all kinds of less invasive things like, um, well, ozone. I put it in a little box with an ozone maker and gave it a full 24 hours running with ozone going through it. It didn't really make a difference. So, all right. So through the, I'm going to take these and clean them all out through the magic of editing. It's going to show up clean. But, uh... Okay, everything's clean now. This thing, these hard surfaces, I put them in hot Dawn water and then scrubbed them out with one of those, you know, dishwashing scrubbers, a brand new one my wife wants you to know. Um, this thing, same thing, give it a good little scrub down, wash the inside and outside until it smells clean, clean enough. This basically has no smell whatsoever. The sponge, put it in the water, squish, 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 in the soapy water, squish, 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 squish. In the clean water, put it between some towels, smoosh it up, you know, fan it out. It smells like a champ. Actually, I guess it smells lightly of Dawn, but that's okay. That'll go away. This, you know, give it some direct spray. It doesn't have any smell anymore. This had sort of a light residue on, on it, like an oily residue. I'm not sure if they put that on at the factory or if that was just like a result of, you know, whatever this was subjected to. Anyway, uh, I gave it, I had to give it several passes, but... You can't submerge this, so you gotta you know take good care to clean it off, clean the wire off. That's really everything. So now let's see if we can get it back together and make it work. Okay. Um, well, first thing we need to do is put the housing back in here. Remember, tab, tab, tab. Here's a double tab, so the wire goes there between these two. Okay. The wire actually goes inside the blue area down in there um, okay now it's not exactly right so I'm just gonna twist it around a little just a little bit because my recollection is it was about halfway in between these two okay that should work now let's hook it to this the double tab here just give them a nice gentle tug. Single tabs. Sorry, I'll put it down here where you can see. Single tabs, remember they're just hooked in there with a little lip. That looks correct to me. Put it in here. Okay. Now you gotta come in here and somehow pull this little silicone bit out with your finger. Okay, silicone. Uh, it's looking kind of, that's what it looked like, right? You put the little foamy thing. These wires are a little spread out more than I like. Let's put them together, put them through that little groove and over and under the little hook. I guess. Okay, that's just me being anal. I'm sure it'll be fine. <clears throat> Looking great. Foam. Top plate. See, there's a little square notch out where the wires are going to go. And if you put them in the right place, there's a notch right there. I don't know if you saw. 
that wasn't working. Okay, three screws to put it back together. Numero uno. This part's not rocket science. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Putting it back together is kind of a pain. You really have to check and double check that you're aligning things correctly because there's not a lot of guides. This particular part is not super hard. So the fact that there's, you know, they're all the same type of screw makes it a lot easier to keep track of everything. And there's no sort of, there's no stuff that breaks, no adhesive you have to undo. And you saw that the parts inside here are mostly pretty uh, water resistant, which makes sense. Because if water gets splashed in there, it needs to be able to dry out. That's probably why they ask you to do dil uh, distilled water. Okay, the little translucent piece. If we can get this right. Round hole, tall peg. Round hole. Okay. And then this. Oh, it went under this, didn't it? Goes under this little situation first. Then we put this on. Can you see that? And but it goes over that and around here. Okay. So this is the part that you want to definitely take a picture of before you do it. Comes out. It's under there, over here, through that little hook. Got it? Okay. Well, let's put it in. So here's the housing. And there's lots of little things that get caught. So you just want to be nice and gentle. Gently. Also, there's like a little T here. So you have to make sure you put it on straight if you pick it up or something or have to decide it won't go in right. See these two little black things sticking out? They go into those blue holes. Okay. Still not feeling... There you go. I like that click. There needs to be more. more. Oh, these wires go under here, don't they? Right there. Okay. All right. At this point, if it makes sense to reconnect the little electric situation, little electric plug thing, because the board is a little bit free floating. That's what I want to see. Boards in more or less the right spot. And again, with the little rubber things. Maybe that's the last thing you should line up. Push that in. Okay, that is aligned. Really, I should have put in the black one first. Think that matters? Somebody does. Black, white, red. Black, white, red. By the way, are you seeing this? I don't know if I was covering it up with my arm, probably. All right. So make these two little guys stick in there. That's important. That's probably not important. This alignment's important. Um, yeah. All right. So let's just put a screw up here. Just put it in lightly so you can still have a little bit of maneuverability with the other two. With this screw. there okay so now we're gonna put back on this plate the one that contains the filter and it also attaches over the little T and you want to have these things still lined up so that the screws from below can go into it looks like they are but there's a little gap I don't know what's the best view like this can you see that just put it on there you'll see fits together like a glove but you gotta remember to get everything aligned correctly. Well, that's as aligned as I'm gonna get it. And it looks pretty good, if you ask me. Okay, we're in the home stretch here. Okay, so 
things are where they need to be. Just double check everything before you put the plate back on. All right, um, so good. Now we're just gonna put, so this is where, this is how it would look, hopefully, if all you had done was remove the little modem. Now the modem's not hanging there because I pulled it out, but that's where it was. When you put this on, you make sure you clip in the back, make sure that you're aligned here, and then lastly, you're gonna push it in the front. So we'll hook it over here. Get it aligned and hook, you know, basically hooked in. Then you pull these little guys over. Yes. Keep getting, keep moving. Okay. Make sure that that piece is pushed in. Yeah. Back looks great. Sides getting there. Keep going. See the little guys? Snap. All right. Okay. <laughs> Make sure that's clipped in there before you do the front. Well, it's pretty much together now. Last four screws. Numero uno. I understand they actually sell replacement, certainly replacement face plates if you don't like flowers. Well, they're really just leaves though. I don't see the problem with leaves. These are manly leaves. I wanted the ResMed for her because it has everything that the ResMed for him has plus one additional auto sitting algorithm. Okay, last two screws are these ones here on the outside that hold the cover in place. Refer to the manual it says. All right, I'll reference that. Actually, this is my third one disassembling and they've all been for hers. So I'm doing them for friends. I always recommend that they get the for hers, why not? They cost the same and it's got more features. Plus, you know, the other one's black. That probably wouldn't show up very well on camera. And it's all about YouTube, I guess. Come on. Well, for those of you that are taking it apart along with me, how are you doing? By the way, clean this area out in here. It's really easy. Um, okay, how are you doing? For those of you who are not, how's your curiosity feeling? The face plate's the last piece. Just looks over the top. And you're done. Let's test it out. Make sure it turns on. Power supply. Okay. So here where we're testing it out. Turn it on. That's a good sign. Oh. Very good sign. Oh, there's a leak detected. That makes sense. I'll plug it up just to show you guys. So there's a little bit of, no, I'm not plugging it completely. Just give a little resistance. Oh, well. It'll work, trust me. All right, um, and in fact, if you go into you know, my options, you go down, let's see, where is it? If you wanted to see, oh, right now it doesn't have the plus enabled, so you can't go see. Anyway, the uh, all the modem stuff is just gone. It's just gone, and it doesn't cause any problems whatsoever. I think those over-the-air firmware, firmware updates, they're mostly to fix the most troublesome part of these, the dang modem. Uh, so now we've got a fully, uh, I would say refurbished, according to my standards, um, used CPAP, APAP. Here's where I have my concluding comments. Concluding comment number one, obviously don't do this unless you're like me, which means you are buying it used. It doesn't represent a significant financial investment and your coefficient of risk aversion is not too high to prevent you from tinkering around. Or if you just need it, let's say it's broken or something, but like in a fairly obvious way, um, you know, maybe you just need to get in there. Or maybe you're just watching this because you're curious. I was curious. In fact, I'm still curious. I want to take apart that last piece, but I'm just, I guess I'm a little too scared. You can't really buy replacement parts for these. And um, I'm not a doctor, not a handyman. I'm just a dude on YouTube that takes stuff apart and probably usually cuts himself doing it. And uh, I hope you guys have as much luck with your ResMed AirSense 10 auto set for her machines as I have. Thanks.